So, you want to make a street? Well, step one, contact the government. Hey guys, welcome back to Spy Kai, I'm Kai, and today we are back in Blender 2.8. Eevee, once again, taking a look at uh, how to make a street here in Blender. A wet, a wet street, like it just rains, and it's kind of, kind of like that. Similar, similar to a, a look like that, kind of. So, we're going to get started. The first thing I want to do is I'm going to hit Shift A. Uh, I actually, off camera, I hit delete on default cube. I apologize, it didn't start with default cube. Wow, I just realized that. Holy moly, that was weird. Anyway, I'm gonna hit shift A and we're gonna search for a mesh plane and then we're gonna hit S to scale that bad boy up a little bit. I'm gonna get rid of our camera uh, just to make it easier on myself today and I'm also gonna get rid of the lamp because we don't need that. So delete on both of those uh, for me. But of course, if you're rendering this, you're gonna need a camera. Um, so, with our plane selected, I'm gonna hit S to scale it up a little bit more and then maybe S Y to scale it on the Y axis. This is not something that we need to do though, because you'll see you'll see in a second. So I'm not gonna make a super long street. We're gonna leave it a square. We're not gonna we're not gonna scale it on the S Y. We're not gonna scale it on the S X. We're just gonna leave it a square, a big square. Square. So after that, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, go to the material tab here, and hit New on this material, creating a new material. We'll just call this like Street uh, Street. If I could type, there we go. My fan's on, I don't know if you can hear it, but it's like 100.45 degrees in my apartment, so we're going to not mind that. Um, we're going to go ahead and split my window into two by dragging from the top left-hand corner until our uh, cursor turns into a plus, and then just drag from there over to the right-hand side. Now, we're going to click this little button up at the top here, and then change this to the shader editor. Get rid of this by just dr clicking and dragging it away, and then zooming in here. Um, and we're going to go ahead and just separate the principal BSDF and the material output a little bit. Use my middle mouse button, once again, my middle mouse button to pan around the material output here. And we're going to go ahead and hit uh, Shift A and search for a color ramp shader. Uh, first off, right there, we're going to plug the color into the, uh, the base color here. Then we're going to go ahead and hit Shift A to search for a noise texture. Click that and then put that right there and plug the color into the factor of the color ramp shader here. And now you can see if we were to go ahead and hit the rendered material on, you can see that we pretty much have nothing except for this. This is what it looks like right now. It doesn't look that great. It looks pretty generic, but that's fine because uh, we got to start from somewhere. I'm going to turn my overlays off by hitting this little button right here to show overlays or hide overlays rather. Um, so that's, that's good. So I'm going to turn the scale up on the noise texture like maybe 10 and the detail all the way up to like 16. Um, I'll turn the roughness up as well to, let's just do an even 0.8. So now we have something that looks like this, which looks pretty good, um, but it could look better. So I'm going to grab this white color on the color ramp and then click this little box right here and then just drag the white color down to a darker color like that. So like it's a gray, gray, like pavement, a little bit of blue saturation in there as well. Um, looks pretty good. I like it quite a bit. So. Next, it looks kind of shiny and not like a street. It looks kind of unrealistic. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and take this a step further by going ahead and hitting Shift D and searching for a Musgrave texture. Once again, we're going to plug the factor. I believe it's into the scale. I think that's how I did it. Oh, pl plug the factor of the Musgrave into the in, what? In, uh, hello, into the scale of the noise texture. I believe that's correct. I believe it is, but I guess we'll find out. Or maybe, oh, you know what it is? Maybe it is the, uh, maybe it's the vector. Maybe I did the vector. Or you know what I'm thinking? I might be thinking, I might be thinking something else. You know what I'm thinking something else. Let's go ahead and actually undo the Musgrave texture and put it down here. This is where it's supposed to go. Plug, plug the factor into the roughness. There we go. Um, and what I want to do with this bad boy is you can see that once we plug this in, you can see we have this nice, like, puddle look. So this looks really good. Um, I like this quite a bit. You could leave it with big puddles like this, but I do enjoy doing... Um, smaller, smaller, more refined things. So I'm going to put this on, I think it was seven, I think it was. And then we'll pull, pull, pull the detail all the way up. And then dimension is what's really going to help us sell this. So I'm going to turn the dimension down very far, all the way down, actually. We'll put it on zero. So that looks really good. So I really, really like the way this looks. It looks like a, a shiny street that was just rained on or like something that was, uh, that used to be you know, a little more dry, now it's kind of wet, or some kind of concrete, or some kind of marble, something. It looks really good, and I really, really like this, um, and it really gives us that concrete feel that I'm looking for. It looks like uh, wet concrete, period. I mean, that, that looks great. I love it. I'm also on material viewport shading. 
I don't think I mentioned that. Anyway, yes, we're in material. Um, so we have that nice reflection of the trees up there. Anyway, we're going to move on forward. We're not going to mess with this value that much because it really doesn't help us out. I mean, you can change it up a little tiny bit, but if you do, do it too much, you're going to start looking like a pattern like that, which does not look good. So I'll just leave that on like, not zero, uh, maybe like 1.9 or two. Let's just do even two. We'll do, put it on two, which I believe is the default. All right, very cool, very cool. I do believe that I had this Musgrave in one of these values over here on the noise, though. I do believe. I, I can't remember what value I had it in, um, but I, I think that I did. I think so. But I think we're going to have to move on because I can't recall. Maybe I was, I think I was testing it out. That's what I was doing. I think I might, maybe was testing it out and I didn't like the way that it was coming out. You know what? I might have had it in, I might have had it in the detail, but it's not enough for me to notice a big deal. So, uh, I don't think that I did. I think I was testing it out and I just didn't, didn't like any of the results. So yeah. All right. We're gonna get rid of that. Now, uh, with this, as you can see, we're pretty much done with the actual street portion, but we need to go ahead and make the actual lines. So with the material, we're going to go ahead and close this by putting our cursor up there. Dragging to the left, um, and now you can see we have a nice uh, little square of street, but this is not obviously a street yet, so I'm going to hit tab to go into edit mode. I'm going to go up here to the left and select loop cut, and then change the number of loops to two up here at the top, to two, two, not four, two, there we go, and then just click once, uh, going lengthwise like this. Now you can see we've created two lines, I'm going to go ahead and hit shift, uh, sorry, shift, uh, S, X to scale this in like this, very thin, super thin like that. Um, and now we look pretty good. Now I'm going to do the same thing, but in the opposite direction. We're going to create two lines right there. I'm going to hit S, Y to scale this inwards like this, and then make it about that big. As you can see, what I'm trying to do here, if you haven't picked up on it already, is I'm trying to make a nice little dash in the middle of the square. Now, so we don't have the loop cut tool anymore. We can change back by going to the select box up at the top. And now you can see we have this nice little thing in the center. I'm going to go to the face select mode up here at the top, and then just click that one little piece in the center. Hit this little plus button over here on the right-hand side in the Materials tab, and then create a new material. Change this to, uh, I'm sorry, create a new material. We don't need that in new material. I forgot. So we're going to go ahead and, and grab that street material that we created already. Hit this little button right here, which is the new material button. And now it's a separate copy. So I'm going to call this street line, lines, rather. So now we can actually change the color without having to worry about um, the, the, the entire material changing. So... Um, I want to go ahead and drop on down here to the base color, which is the color ramp. And now you can see we can edit the color ramp right here instead of having to go back to the shader uh, editor. So that's very, very cool. So what I want to do is I want to change both of these colors to a yellowish color. So I'm going to grab the black color, pull it up a little bit, and pull it to the yellow, maybe something like this, right? And then grab this lighter color and then change this to a very vibrant yellow. So something like, uh, something like, like that, perhaps. Yeah, cool. So we have that nice little transition. Maybe this could be a little bit more golden, a little brighter. Yeah, something like that. It looks really good. I love it. Awesome. Now, back in edit mode, so hit tab. I'm gonna go ahead and with this still this with this line still selected, I'm gonna go ahead, select this material right here, and hit assign. Now you can see instantly we now have that yellow piece as part of the street. And the great thing about this is is that we still have that nice texture on there because we just duplicated the material and just changed the colors. So, very, very cool way to do that. Now, what we can do now to extend the street out is, of course, go to the uh, the modifiers tab, add a modifier of array, and now you can see, obviously, this is going the wrong direction. So, we'll change this from 1 to 0, and then from, uh, I think, I believe the second one, yeah, the second one to 1. Now, depending on the way you made this, like how it was rotated like this or whatever, it's going to be a different value, but just make it go, you know, how a street goes. You, you get the idea. So, there we go. Now, you can go ahead and see we have a nice street that goes all the way down, way long. You can see we have the nice dashes in the street. Now, these dashes are too small or too big. You can always go ahead and edit these real quick by just scaling them up. Now, this will mess up the geometry a little bit of the ver vertices up at the top. Uh, way to fix that is you can just go out and grab the entire vertice. So you just go back to vert vertices select mode and then just select the entire line, like both of these, like all of these, hold down shift, and then just hit S, uh, S, Y, and you can make it longer. Uh, and if you want to change these, you can hold down shift, select all of these vertices, or just hit B to box, select all of them, and then just hit S, X, and scale it like that. So you can have super thick lines, super small lines, whatever flo floats your boat, you know, Ooh, whatever floats your boat. Um, so very, very cool stuff. As you can see, it's, it's quite, quite easy to make and quite easy to pull off. And I know a lot of people ask me about streets and whatnot. So here you go, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you ladies and gentlemen enjoyed it. I will see you in the next one. But until then, bye-bye.